yoga is something that permeates the spiritual traditions of India. Mm. It is not. It is not something that's um, uh, limited in that way. And, and it, it's. It is more of a tool. Uh, it's like a toolbox. Um, you can take a toolbox and build a house, or you can take a toolbox and build a shed. And, you know, there are different things you can build with a toolbox. So yoga is found in so many traditions in India. And now it's found, you know, then it went uh, east to Taoism and, uh, and Buddhism. Uh, and it was, you know, well, the Buddha himself took up yoga in India when he was in India. But as Buddhism spread to the East, uh, it took yoga with it and revised it and made it its own. And in modern times, um, you've got uh, Muslims, Christians, and Jews practicing yoga. Oh, okay. I'd heard of Christian yoga, but I didn't know about Muslims also. Absolutely. There are select Muslims that practice yoga. Okay. True, I like this metaphor of the toolbox. That's beautiful. That means it's, as you said, a set of practices. Different people can take whatever they want. And it, they don't necessarily uh, all adhere to one philosophy, one theology or one philosophy or even one worldview. So even in the Bhagavatam, you mentioned the philosophical sections where the yoga is talked about. But apart yeah. from that, it seems almost... Uh, every character, they do some kind of yoga, yogic postures. When Yudhishthira yes. announces the world, or even when Prutu announces the world, they sit in the yoga posture. So, yes. so th then they meditate and they try to distance themselves from their the material elements that make their body. So that would also yes. be an example of a toolbox thing. That uh, they they are taking the yoga practice for cultivating inner awareness or focusing on the indwelling Lord, whatever it may be. That's right. So yoga is, it can be a toolbox, just like you, you you dip into a toolbox when you need a hammer, when you need a screwdriver, and when you don't need them, you put them back. Um, it's something that enhances the building of something, right? But at the same time, if one reads the Yoga Sutra carefully, if one reads the Bhagavad Gita you know, carefully, one finds that the ultimate yoga is a perfection is an end. And, and this is also an extraordinary part of yoga and it's worth paying attention to for sure. Yeah. Okay, so we could put it this way. This is a toolbox which and the tools can be used for various purposes. But yes. the toolbox has an original purpose. Yes. So that toolbox was meant to build something. We can use it to build various, various things also. Yes. So, so for example, in today's world, People are using that toolbox or something from that toolbox to make their bodies uh, slimmer and uh, healthier. So yes. that, you could say that's a more mundane use of that toolbox. But that toolbox had an original purpose. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, you see, the word yoga, in the simplest of terms, means union. Now, union means bringing one thing together with another in a harmonious whole. So that union can take place at different levels. My aching back, oh, my aching back with the rest of my healthy body. I, I go to, to the yoga studio and bring the unhealthy part of my back into a union with the rest of my body, my healthy body in a harmonious whole. That's one kind of union. Um, another kind of union is now typically people who come to fix the back problems in a yoga studio, they don't stop. They go, wow, this is something special here. I feel, I feel something extra here. So yoga is always about upliftment, mm. always about elevation. So don't practice yoga if you don't want to be more and more elevated in your human existence, hmm. because that's where it goes. Now, um, sometimes, so after the back is fixed, then one can balance more the internal 
psychical energies, uh, the psychophysical, uh, the psychoenergetic centers of the body, the, the chakras, um, which where we bury uh, the sanskaras and the kleshas, um, the vasanas, the things that the the traumas uh, that that um, limit the energy in our lives. So yoga can help release those chakras. Chakras a wheel, mm -hmm. and if you are familiar with driving in a car, when a wheel hits a pothole. It gets the whole wheel off, can even puncture the wheel. Yoga is about a tire repair, you know? It's about a wheel repair. Allow those chakras to um, circle freely and to be energized freely. So, uh, for example, the, the, the third chakra, the Manipura chakra. Okay. Yeah. Just want to understand the examples, beautiful examples. So you're saying that just as a pothole may damage a wheel. So similarly, life's traumas can damage us. And then, That's right. So then the, if, the, if the wheel is damaged, the, the car can't move very well. So similarly, right. because, of the samskar, because of the impression, the samskaras created by life's, uh, life's unhappy events, yes. our energies can't move properly. So then right. yoga is like fixing the tire, so it's like fixing the car. Sorry, it's like yeah. fixing the chakras. That's right. A striking example. Yeah. See, see we're, we're, we're like vehicles. I mean, of course, the Gita tall calls the body a vehicle, mm. right? A yantra, right? Yeah. So, so it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a machine and it has wheels. It has seven wheels, the seven chakras. Mm. And these um, energize, these are psychoenergetic centers. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it starts with the bottom of the spine, um, the genital area, the, the uh, solar plexus, the, uh, the heart area, the, the uh, throat, um, uh, the, the, the forehead, middle of the forehead, and then, of course, the Brahmarundra. And then, and so there are the seven wheels. Now, if something traumatic happens, like you said, Chaitanya Charanji, if something happens, if a pothole of life comes along then our wheel gets a bit damaged and it doesn't work as well. Now, of course, we've got the other six wheels working, you know, but there's no such thing as a spare tire. Okay. So you, so, so you have to make sure that the wheel gets repaired or it doesn't, and it limits us in life. Okay. So yoga is very much a toolbox to repair the tires. Beautiful. Okay. But what's the purpose of these seven tires? Where do the wheels hmm. take us? Where are we going with those seven wheels? That's the key. And yoga answers that too. So that's why you said that the tool toolbox was meant for a particular purpose. Even yes. though we use it for various purposes. That's right. And these various purposes needn't necessarily be contradictory with the original purpose. Like you've got a point of union, bringing things together. So bringing the body together, the aching back to work better with the rest of the body. So that is a part of a functioning human being then who can actually ultimately fulfill the purpose of life. So, right. the, so the purpose we use it for it is not, if somebody uses it for, say, a bodily purpose, that is not intrinsically contradictory with the original purpose. It may become yeah. if their life's purpose is entirely different, consciously. But that's something, that's something which is contextual. So, right. yeah. So, for example, it, yeah. Sorry. I mean, it, well, I just want to point out, Chaitanya Charanji, that, that, you know, you can use part of the toolbox and, you know, not engage the rest of the toolbox. But then again, what you're trying to fix is something very narrow. The toolbox is for the whole human being and the development and elevation of consciousness. Hmm. And ultimately, the cultivation 
of the heart.